um, and begin to use some of the geospatial uh, technologies that we have uh, that go back as far as Ian McCarg and others to begin to uh, re-examine uh, what land we use for what and the work that's been going on in sustainable sites and others are great uh, starting points for that research. But uh, I think the most worrisome exponential increase of all is uh, this one, uh, which is world population. And in a way, you could argue that this is behind all the other stresses that we're seeing on the planet, which is the idea that it took humans, uh, all of human history, to get to 2 billion people. And in 100 years, from 1950 to 2050, we'll go from 2 billion to 9 billion people. We are a completely out-of-control species. We are the weed species on the planet, and we are the, the major invasive species. And um, so I think that coming to terms with the fact that we are the problem, it is us, uh, and what do we do about this? Because the, the worrisome thing about this is when you talk to ecologists, when they see an increase like this of any species in an ecosystem, there's only almost, almost invariably one result. The species collapses. And we don't want that to happen, obviously. That, but the urgency of this, that this is not just something that we have to uh, think about as an incremental change. This is a ticking time bomb, and it is, it is all of us. Um, and it is not something that will just happen in Africa or Asia. Um, one pandemic disease carried through our transportation system will immediately affect all of us and is probably one of the greatest threats um, to um, an exponential increase in our numbers such as this. So um, uh, how does then uh, geodesign help with that? I think one of the things about it is that it can begin to uh, help us understand how we will um, allocate ourselves in cities, um, how uh, we will uh, think about human settlements in ways that are more resilient and uh, come to grips with the fact that um, uh, if we are going to sustain our population on the planet, we have to have a fundamentally different relationship with the natural world um, or that we will ourselves be one of the species that's part of the sixth extinction. Um, and these are issues that um, none of us like to face up to, uh, we don't like to talk about. Uh, they are, though, the core issues that are driving a lot of the design community, and it's one reason why the design community is so eager to work with the GIS community on developing these tools. We have got to begin to make decisions about how we allocate ourselves and how we allocate resources in ways that um, address uh, these uh, threats uh, that really uh, uh, are in front of all of us. One of the things we can learn about um, with all of this uh, is, is the way in which uh, ecosystems collapse. Some of you may know the work of Buzz Hollings at Florida and the work he's done with others on Panarchy and the Resilience Institute. A lot of their work has shown that as uh, ecosystems collapse, largely because there is an increasing um, efficiency, of, particularly of a few species in the ecosystem, uh, there's an increasing connectiveness within the ecosystem, uh, but all redundancy and resilience from the ecosystem has um, been removed. And so an ecosystem collapse is an adaptive cycle, um, uh, as Hollings and others would argue, back to resiliency, but it brings two other pieces to it. It, it, it brings uh, uh, a... Uh, a change in the way in which uh, the ecosystem is efficient and it actually decreases the interconnectedness of them. And so those are some, uh, I would argue, design principles that we have to actually start to think about um, as we think about our um, uh, inhabitation of the planet. Here is an uh, adaptive cycle uh, from that work on panarchy, which sort of shows how... Um, uh, uh, ecologists have seen how ecosystems rise and fall, and um, I think one of the questions for us is to sort of question the idea that we often assume is that we are on some endlessly increasing line of progress, that in fact as a human ecosystem, we in fact may be in the midst of an adaptive cycle very much like this, that all other species go through, plant and animal, and that um, how do we begin to address the fact that we may be on that upper curve of about to sort of um, reestablish resiliency as one of the, the key uh, variables and, and key values that we need to uh, um, pursue. And I think geodesign plays a key role in this transition by making global data available to us 
helping us see consequences not only locally but globally in our design decisions, um, providing the design community real-time data so that we can make data-rich decisions um, uh, are all uh, aspects of this new field that uh, will be uh, uh, vitally important. I think also uh, the idea of uh, geodesign uh, empowering ordinary people, as Jack was saying, we live in this age of mobile technology. How can we bring this information not only to the hands of experts, but in the hands of everybody so that as we make day-to-day -day decisions, do I drive to get that quart of milk or do I walk? Do I, uh, you know, uh, uh, water my lawn or do I let it go native? I mean, there are just myriad decisions that uh, geodesign um, empowered people can uh, begin to change uh, their behavior uh, at a level that will be, I think, uh, fundamental to uh, our ability to begin to deal with some of the fracture critical threats that we face. Um, and I think that, uh, let me just end here because I, I would love to hear some of your thoughts about some of this um, uh, with some work that um, has been coming out of the um, ecology community. Um, this is a diagram that uh, uh, Jeffrey um, West from the Santa Fe Institute has been developing. He's a geophysicist. Uh, you may know some of his work on um, uh, sort of scaling. Um, uh, he's been finding sort of universal scaling laws that apply across plant and animal communities. He's also started to look at urban settlements, human settlements in terms of these scaling techniques. One of the interesting discoveries he's made is that there's a constant relationship between the mass and metabolism of all plants and animals on the planet, uh, with one exception, which is humans. Uh, via technology, we now have the metabolism or the energy absorption needs of a blue whale. So one way to think about the stresses that are on the planet is that we now live in a planet with six and a half billion blue whales, which is us, we are driving other species off the planet, and we ourselves are threatened because the planet may not be big enough for that many blue whales. So one of the interesting design challenges, which geodesign can help us with, is how do we bring our mass metabolism ratio back into alignment with what it used to be? I mean, humans lived on this planet for thousands and thousands of years within the mass metabolism ratio of all other species. It's only been in the last few hundred years that we are way out of line. And so we need to redesign the world uh, and redesign our daily lives in ways that we stop absorbing so much energy and run all the other species or so many other species off the planet and potentially ourselves with it. Uh, but this is another uh, diagram that Jeffrey West's group has developed, which is um, Looking, he too is concerned about these exponential increases, uh, these curves that we are on, on water, on food, on energy, on carbon accumulation, on population. Uh, we are on so many of them, and that's the sort of diagram uh, shown by number one. And he argues that what we need to uh, prevent catastrophic collapse, such as uh, what would happen with number two, um, is innovation. And uh, so innovation is, is these series of sort of sculpted increases here, which are that through innovation, uh, we can um, uh, sort of rethink uh, 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 the way in which we inhabit the planet. Uh, we can rethink the use of resources and, um, and, and prolong our ability to sustain ourselves uh, on a planet uh, um, such as the one we're on. I think. To me, uh, and these kinds of uh, points, uh, number three, number six, are these sort of moments of innovation where there's a profound paradigm shift in the way in which we occupy the planet. I think geodesign is one of them. I think it actually has that potential that it can be one of these tools that through the proper use of it, we can begin to reestablish a different relationship with our settlement patterns, with our relationship to nature, and prolong our ability to sustain uh, so many billions of people uh, on this planet. So uh, Geo's design, uh, his time has come, I think, and it's none too soon. So thank you with that, and uh, look forward to any questions you might have.